I'm working with a $500 budget to build a gaming PC with an RTX graphics card. And I'm going to be comparing it against another gaming PC. This famous YouTuber known as ZTT built a gaming computer for 500 bucks. And his title isn't lying. It is a super clean PC build, but I feel I can build something that one, performs better, and two, looks just as good. Maybe not better, cause you know our boy Zach knocks the aesthetics out of the park every time. I am going to put the computers up against each other and see how they perform at the end of the video. Starting off this budget build is a nice CPU option. It's the Ryzen 7 2700X. It's an eight core, 16 threaded processor and it's built on the AM4 platform. As I've said before, it is the GOATI budget platform. This CPU released with an MSRP of $329. Thankfully, you can find it for super cheap now, around 70 bucks. Now for the motherboard, it's this Asus Tough B450, which I secured for 50 bucks a couple months back. It's a pretty basic board with four RAM slots, one M.2 slot, and a mid rear IO with six USB ports, including a Type-C port. AM4 boards have recently seen a price increase. It wasn't by a whole lot, but you can still manage to find really good deals on them with a little bit of patience. I'm loading up the motherboard with this Corsair Vengeance LPX RAM kit. It's a two by eight gigabyte pair of DDR4 clocked at a sweet 3200 megahertz. And for our storage, I'm going with the same budget option that ZTT went with in their build. It's a one terabyte drive from Silicon Power and I bought mine in a two pack for $75.04. Let's compare both options. Zach's PC build, he went with an i3-10100F, which is only a four core eight threaded processor, but it is newer than the Ryzen 7 if you care about that. But don't let the i3 name fool you. It's a very solid chip and it's a really great option, especially compared to their older i3 generations. It's actually usable for gaming and you can see in testing that the i3 will dish out more frames than the Ryzen 7 2700X, despite it having less cores. So his CPU is better. But I personally would go with my option, the Ryzen 7 2700X. It does have more cores and threads, and I know it's not just about the core count, but come on, it is a valid point. The second point to go with this route, you have way more upgradability with this AM4 platform. On this B450 motherboard, you can upgrade to something like the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D. And at one time, this was the best CPU for gaming. But being the best in technology doesn't last long, but it is still an awesome CPU to upgrade to. The Intel route, however, it doesn't have as many options to choose from. Which CPU slash motherboard combo would you pick? Let me know in the comments. To house all of our components, it's a super budget friendly option. It's the SAMA ARGB Q5W. The W stands for white and they also have it in black. It's a micro ATX form factor case with three included ARGB fans, a nice mesh front panel for airflow, and a tempered glass side panel for looks. It even has a built-in RGB hub in the back of the case with space to add an additional fan or RGB accessory, which is perfect because I'm using the ID Cooling SE 214XD ARGB CPU cooler. And I can easily connect all the fans so they are synced together. That way, when you press the little RGB button, all the colors are synced and it will look super sick. The most important part of any gaming PC is the graphics card. I mean, you can't really game without one. The GPU I chose is the Gigabyte RTX 3060, which is equipped with 12 gigabytes of video memory. More specifically, it's the Eagle OC edition. I scored mine for a price tag of $175. You can find them for around 200, but if you shop around, you can find a better deal though. You can even opt for the RX 6600 XT for a cheaper price and get very similar performance. Powering our little budget RTX gaming PC is an EVGA unit. It's 750 watts with an 80 plus bronze rating. Nothing too crazy, it's not modular or anything, but it does have all black cables. And even though it doesn't have ketchup and mustard cables, I did opt for some nice white cable extensions. I gotta try to keep up with Zach's aesthetic somehow. All these parts totaled up to $502.37. Zach's PC build was barely over $500, but he did mention if you don't care too much about aesthetics, you can build it closer to $400. Keep in mind though, he used a GTX 1060 
It's not a terrible card, but the 3060 is miles better. In my humble opinion, his build is super clean. It looks better than mine. But I will let you guys be the judge of that though. Comment down below what build you think looks better in terms of aesthetics. And he may have won in the aesthetics category, but that's not everything. Let's test these bad boys out and see how they do. First game is Apex Legends. Zach's i3 and GTX 1060 PC averaged 134 FPS at 1080p with medium settings. I decided to run the same settings. And it's safe to say my PC took the dub on this one. With medium settings, I averaged 143 FPS with a 1% low of 111. Then I decided to put all the settings to high and we still averaged 140 FPS. Keep in mind though, Apex does have a 144 FPS limit. You can disable it, but eh, I just didn't really feel like it. We definitely could have gotten more frames though. Zach tested Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 with minimum settings and averaged 65 FPS. I don't have MW2, but I do have Cold War, so I tested that at 1080p. Also using minimum settings, and once again, we averaged way more than 65 FPS. We got 155 FPS. Even when you switch the settings to high, you still manage to stay above 144 FPS. Now for Fortnite, ZTT tested at 1080p with pro settings. He didn't show the exact settings he used, but I assume they are something like the ones I chose. His system averaged 153 FPS and ours only averaged 96 FPS. Not very good. This is one of those cases where the i3 will win against the Ryzen 7 because it can render out more frames. It's basically just better and faster at communicating than the Ryzen 7. But we still managed a dub, not too shabby. However, I wasn't happy with an average under 100 frames, so I tested it again with the same settings, except this time I changed over to DirectX 11 instead of DX12 and we saw a big increase. We averaged 139 FPS, which isn't as much as the i3 PC, but hey, we can't win them all. Now for GTA 5, both systems were tested at 1080p high settings, and the results are pretty similar. The Ryzen 7 pushes to the front with an average of 117 FPS, but the i3 system isn't too far behind. Now for slightly more demanding games like Hogwarts Legacy, the RTX 3060 will just easily outperform the 1060. I tested with high settings and we averaged 55 FPS and with medium settings it averages 75 FPS. In Cyberpunk 2077, running the in-game benchmark, we can play this game at 1080p with ultra settings and still average 72 FPS. And if you wanted to play with ray tracing, you definitely can. I tested with ultra ray tracing and it averaged 46 FPS. To get above 60, you can probably drop the ray tracing settings down to low or medium. Racing off in Forza Horizon 5, you can see the Ryzen 7 PC takes the dub again. Zach tested the game with medium settings and averaged 81 FPS. I also tested with medium settings and averaged 85 FPS. I then decided to try with extreme settings and we averaged 68 FPS. Now the last test is 3D Mark Time Spy. Zach's system scored 4,378 and my system scored, I forgot the number, it's up on the screen, yada yada. So which PC is better? It's really equal. Zach's build is better in the CPU department and my build is better in the GPU department. If both of the systems had a 10th gen i3, then the FPS numbers would be a bit differently, they wouldn't be so close. But as I said, the i3 is actually faster than the Ryzen 7, so it does make sense why it can push out more frames in Fortnite than my PC can. So both builds are great and perform really good for the price tag of $500. But if you are building a PC and your budget is $500, I highly recommend you get a better GPU than a 1060. All of my parts were bought locally and some of them online like the CPU cooler, the NVMe SSD, and the cable extensions. You can replicate this build for around $500. You might spend a little bit more, might spend a little bit less. It just depends on how patient you are with finding deals. But I will have all the parts used linked down below for you to check them out. Everyone like, comment, and share this video. Let's try to get noticed by Zach. I think it would be really cool to do a collab with him in the future, maybe like a PC building contest or PC flipping contest or whatever. But hey, you watching right now, if you enjoyed the video, smash that like button, subscribe if you loved it, and watch this video next. I'll see your awesome face over there. Peace.